Hi, I'm Brian Mellendorf, Executive Director of Hyperledger. And today I'm going to talk with you all about uh, Hyperledger and open source, building the future with blockchain on top of cloud native. Uh, it's really exciting to be here uh, virtually, of course, uh, speaking with you at uh, the, uh, the Cloud Native Summit uh, and Open Source Summit. Uh, I really wish I could be there in, uh, China, uh, in China. Uh, I, I always love traveling there and engaging with the uh, open source community in China, uh, particularly around Hyperledger and around blockchain technology. It's incredibly vibrant there, uh, and it's a really exciting uh, community uh, and, and also exciting commercial uh, space to be involved in as well. Um, and it's kind of no surprise. I, I, the, the, the topic of blockchain technology has received a lot of attention, a, a lot of attention in China uh, recently. I, 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 the uh, uh, leader Xi Jinping um, I has uh, publicly declared uh, his support and the criticality of the adoption of blockchain technology for the country of China. Um, uh, and I think I, he is uh, uh, really foresightful in and uh, understanding the uh, potential for this technology to help modernize uh, all sorts of uh, really important industrial processes and all sorts of uh, uh, bureaucratic processes that can be turned into digital processes and made more inherently auditable, inherently regulated, uh, and able to build marketplaces that can be extremely dynamic and resilient uh, and also fair in a way that sometimes is hard to achieve uh, without uh, these technologies. Um, and so I, I having that kind of support from the top is really useful uh, to go and get budgets, but also to help convince people who are kind of behind the curve uh, that it's time to adopt this technology. And so uh, the, uh, that's, I just wanna say this is an amazing thing. I, I certainly wish my country had such uh, top level support for blockchain technology. Um, but we are starting to see other nations in the world adopt it as well. And the interesting thing about the way that blockchain uh, relates to the, the cloud computing environment is uh, that I, I, you know, Cloud computing tends to be very much about centralizing power and centralizing compute and centralizing uh, control over data. Um, uh, but very much blockchain technology is about decentralizing that, about building a cooperative network of uh, nodes from many different companies, many different organizations, including government, um, that can all operate in harmony um, uh, and also keep each other in check uh, in a way that is really impossible to do when you're all feeding into and out of one central server, no matter where that is based. And so um, that meets up with cloud computing in some very interesting ways, and I'll talk about uh, during this talk. Um, but let me give you a bit more background on Hyperledger for those of you who don't know. We are a part of the Linux Foundation. We are a uh, project, we've been around for about four years. Uh, and in that time, we have built a very impressive, what we call greenhouse of different technologies for building enterprise blockchain services. Now, this is very different from the cryptocurrency kind of world that many of you might associate with the word blockchain. This is much more about enterprise use of really distributed databases, uh, but databases that are very special in that you, you can encode in these databases certain rules about how the database can be updated uh, and enforce those across the network in such a way that nobody is in a privileged position to be able to corrupt the system. Um, it turns out there are many different valid ways to build such a database. Uh, we actually have six different uh, uh, database uh, ledgers, if you think of them that way. Um, these are uh, technologies that when you build a network, uh, each participant in the network runs this software on a node uh, or a collection of nodes, and that represents their interest uh, in the shared network. Um, and so the, uh, we have many uh, of these six different ones actually, uh, and they're based on different technologies and different approaches. Um, I don't have the time to go into too much depth about uh, all the different approaches that are taken, um, but I, I wanna highlight a few. Uh, there's uh, one of the more recent ones is something called Hyperledger Bezu, and Bezu is uh, based on top of the Ethereum technology stack using the very familiar programming language Solidity. You can now build permissioned blockchain networks uh, using Hyperledger Bezu uh, along with the Ethereum technology community, right? Um, and also the Bezu can run on the public mainnet as they call it. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, we also have something called Hyperledger Sawtooth, which is a very stripped down, very simple, uh, very uh, um, 
a, a flexible uh, tool uh, for building blockchain networks uh, designed for very wide scale kinds of networks. But the one that I think is adopted most widely uh, out there in the industry is Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, there's lots of other interesting technologies in, um, in the greenhouse that I uh, would love for you to come and explore. Uh, but really the one I wanna talk today uh, uh, most about is Hyperledger Fabric. Hyperledger Fabric uh, is um, uh, the project that really we started with uh, and has grown now uh, to be over 50% of the deployments out there uh, uh, across the internet uh, of blo enterprise blockchain technologies. There is support for Hyperledger Fabric on every major cloud across the world. Uh, not only the cloud providers in the United States uh, and Europe, such as AWS and Google Cloud, not only the um, uh, vendor driven ones such as IBM and Oracle and SAP, uh, and of course, Microsoft Azure, uh, but also the ones with a very strong presence uh, there in mainland China, Baidu, Tencent, Ali, uh, Ant Financial, Huawei, uh, as well as some new ones, Dianrong, uh, JD.com, Lenovo, all of these organizations run cloud infrastructure and from all of them, you can provision fabric as a managed service uh, 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 to represent your node on a shared network. Um, and this is the whole promise and potential of enterprise blockchain technology is uh, to get it widely supported across the cloud, um, but also to build these systems that are not centralized on any one single cloud provider. And so no matter what use case you're thinking of uh, using this for supply chain traceability, trade finance, digital identity, um, I, the important thing is you can build these networks now across clouds so that even if a cloud goes out of, uh, drops off the network, has a routing problem, uh, decides not to support the technology anymore, um, goes out of business, right? You have resilience in the network. And so this is a really cool thing to see. And Fabric is now a, a commercially supported blockchain as a service offering across all these major providers. Um, uh, and, and as evidence of uh, the deployment of Hyperledger Fabric out there, uh, there is a survey done once a year by Forbes magazine uh, called the Blockchain 50, where they look out and see, well, who out there is, uh, who amongst the 50 largest companies in the world, uh, those with revenue north of a billion dollars a year, uh, uh, who's using enterprise blockchain technology and what uh, types of blockchains are they using? And uh, from this list, more than half uh, of them were running Hyperledger Fabric and uh, another, another six out of those 50 were running other Hyperledger technologies. Um, and the, and the footprint is across some really different kinds of organizations, uh, uh, technology organizations, uh, as you can see in this slide here, uh, uh, but also companies like Cargill, who use uh, technology for shipping of goods uh, uh, and tracking of those shipments. Uh, companies like uh, Santander, which is a bank, HSBC, of course, China Construction Bank, I want to note. In fact, uh, there's quite a few deployments there in China Thanks very much to at Hyperledger, we have a, a group of about 50 different Chinese companies who serve as our membership base there, helping go and, and deploy this technology out there very widely. Um, we have always had a very strong contingent from China, about 20% of our membership, uh, but also about 15% of the contributions into Hyperledger. And so we introduced something very early on called the Technical Working Group for China um, uh, to help facilitate the collaboration between developers based in China, uh, not only using Hyperledger Fabric and other Hyperledger technologies, but also wanting to contribute bug fixes and improvements and those sorts of things. Um, we knew that language would be a barrier and sometimes time zones uh, and sometimes uh, firewalls and those sorts of things. So we felt it was important to build a local community in China, very much focused on serving the needs of um, the technical community there. Uh, and so, uh, and, the, and to be a bridge to the global community. And so that we're very thankful for the Technical Working Group China, and it's been a very key part of our success. Um, we have also now introduced at Hyperledger the, the concept of the Hyperledger Certified Service Provider. Um, this is modeled very much after the Kubernetes service, Certified Service Provider program uh, that CNCF has done so well, um, because we know it's important that on the cloud that you have compatible systems and you have vetted, verifiable partners out there going and bu building these different uh, services. We have 12 of these global uh, uh, Hyperledger Certified Solutions Providers, and you'll see the list here. 
And you'll notice that a couple of them, uh, and Financial, of course, PeerSafe, ProInsight, uh, and uh, uh, Xingui, um, are based there in China. And of course, some of the other companies, Accenture, IBM, uh, others have, have a lot of activity there in China as well. So um, China is well represented commercially in the hyperledger sector as well. And we think this is really exciting because there's so many interesting use cases, but not only across the world, and you see a few examples of them here, uh, but also there are specifically in China. So uh, focusing specifically in China, uh, there's a very large trade finance network run by China Construction Bank, uh, facilitating the extensions of letters of credit between 40 different banks, uh, as well as uh, trading partners uh, and, and others, so that when goods are shipped, especially from China to the outside world, um, that there's there's a nice even paper trail, so to speak, and a, and a blockchain trail of, of the, the history of transactions and the guarantees that are made by different banks to each other. Um, another similar one, uh, uh, trade finance network set up by China Minchang Bank, uh, Tencent Cloud has set up a warehouse receivables network uh, on top of this technology. But the most interesting and different ap application of this, I think, is by a company called Legal X Chain that has applied this to uh, the uh, collection and verification of evidence in the internet court system so that you can make sure that when evidence is presented in court that it's the same document that was originally uploaded. You, so it uses uh, signatures and hashes to make sure that nothing is changed in those documents uh, because that might affect the outcome of a court unfairly. Right. So all sorts of really interesting approaches to this. Um, we have a very active presence there in China. We have a team based in Hong Kong uh, who are constantly engaging with our uh, China members. We would really love all of you to join the community, uh, come try, uh, try out the code, uh, listen to some of the use cases, think about where you might use it. We've localized a lot of content um, and a lot of the uh, documentation for Fabric and some of the other pieces, and would really love you to take a look at that and consider joining the Hyperledger community. Thank you very much.